This is my testimony. This is my story of how Jesus Christ saved me from the darkness, from the, the New Age occult, and brought me into his glorious light, gifted me with everlasting life, and just, just filled me with, with the Holy Spirit and saved, saved my soul. <clears throat> So I'm quite, <laughs> I'm quite nervous to make this video. I have been putting it off for some time and today God made it very clear to me that it was time to speak on this today. So I'm going to start and we'll just see how it goes because I did not plan this. I am letting him work through me. He is using me. So let's just get started. I want to start by talking about my background. I came from a Catholic religious background. I grew up Catholic and I remember even being a really small child, my mom talking about God and the different Catholic beliefs that my family believed in. And I went to church. I went to church. I, I remember we used to go every Sunday and then I also went to catechism and I was, I was baptized as a child, by the way, when I was a baby and in the Catholic church. And, um, I grew up in the Catholic church and I did my first communion. I did all of that. And then after the first communion, I kind of started to fall away from the Catholic church. And, um, I noticed about the Catholic religion that I I just didn't connect to it. I didn't relate to it. It didn't feel right to me. I it didn't it didn't speak to me. I didn't feel like I had a personal relationship with God from being in that religion. And I remember feeling that ever since I was a child, feeling very empty, feeling like something was missing, and I didn't know what that was. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> um, I did not expect to cry today. So I'm going to try not to. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so I grew up in the Catholic Church. <laughs> and um, I, I just always felt like there was something missing. And I remember as a teenager feeling really depressed. Not only because I was going through, you know, what a lot of teenagers go through. Um, but also because I, I started to notice that the world was very dark and I noticed all of the, the systems that were in place and how wrong they were. And I noticed that, you know, I wasn't very close to my family and that I just, I just noticed, I, I observed a lot in the world and I, and I looked around and I said, is this really what life is? Is this, is this really it? Is this, I, I did believe in God. So I said, is this really what God intended for, for us on this earth? And it made me very depressed thinking that that was it. And so I distracted myself. I distracted myself with partying, with friends, with just having fun and doing all kinds of things that I probably shouldn't be doing. And I just distracted myself with worldly, earthly things, thinking that, well, since life seems so bad, I might as well have fun. I might as well make the best of it. And I started to dabble in the new age occult at that time. I, I got into astrology. And then when I was in college, I got into yoga. I took a yoga class and I didn't really know what yoga was, but a friend at the time told me, hey, we should do this. It's like an exercise kind of thing. And so I did yoga and that's where I meditated for the very first time. The instructor had us go through this meditation where it was, I guess it was meant to put you into your body. And at the time I thought, wow, this works. Like I really am noticing, like we're walking through this meditation. It was a guided one. And so I'm noticing that, yeah, everything she's saying, like I can follow this so easily. And looking back now, I realized that 
I was just opening a portal. <laughs> I was opening the door um, for demons, for Satan to come in. But I thought it was amazing. I thought it was something different. I thought that Maybe this is the answer. Maybe we're meant to meditate, to connect more to our bodies, to connect to our soul, to connect to God. And so then after that, I started to explore more and more new age practices and just get deeper into it. I remember um, <laughs> one of the, well, I started to, to look at different websites online, I started to, to search um, not only astrology, but also astral projection, meditation, how to connect to your higher self, you know, and it's like when you look, when you Google at that time, this was probably like, like 20, 2012 or around that time, those years, um, early um, 2010, 2011, 12, around there. And um, I started to just research and when you research, you know, more and more things come up. <laughs> and so we, you know, one thing led to another and then it just opened up this world of the occult for me. And coming from the background that I did where it was so structured and ritualistic in Catholicism and then going into a world where it's like, anything goes, you know, the spirit world is completely open to you. That to me at the time seemed like the answer. In Catholicism, we don't learn to have a personal relationship with God, with Jesus, even though they do believe in Jesus, they, they do believe he is God and what he did for us on the cross. But it's completely different. You don't, I, I, I never really understood it. I, it didn't really touch me. I wasn't saved. And so the new age just seemed more appealing, right? Like, well, I can explore <laughs> different spiritual practices and develop myself personally, spiritually, and I could have a deeper connection to God that way. That's what I thought at the time. So I started to explore that. And I thought at the time, I was researching different things, different, I was looking for answers from different spiritual teachers at the time different articles, people that wrote about different spiritual practices. And I thought they were giving me answers. And I thought, well, I could also find the answers myself. If God is within, like they teach you in the new age, then I could find those answers myself. I could meditate, I could explore. And so I just got deeper and deeper into the new age over time. <clears throat> so around 2014, yeah, it was 2014. I actually started to feel called to doing something more. I thought it was God calling me to find my purpose, to to serve people, to find out what what it is that I wanted to be doing. What what is God calling me to to do? What is my higher self calling me to do on this earth? And so I I left school at the time to explore a spiritual career. I was a psychology major. I mean, I changed my my major. I changed I went to so many schools over time and the last one that I went to, I went to to college, to a community college for psychology because I thought I want to be a therapist. I want to help people. I want to counsel them and help them that way because I noticed that a lot of people would come to me for advice. People would come to me and just tell me their life story and pour their heart out to me. And so I thought maybe this means that I'm meant to be a counselor type. And then um, I eventually decided that I wanted to explore a spiritual um, career instead because I felt like God was missing in the psychology classes that I was in. So after a major life change, you know, I... Um, I kind of have told the story in my spiritual business before that I, I had a, a major life change where I left a relationship and then I realized, wow, I, you know, I don't really want to be doing psychology. I thought I just had to because I thought that's what I was meant to do in this relationship. And so when that ended, it's like at the time I thought, well, this freed me. I can do whatever I want now. I'm, I'm not in a relationship anymore. I'm free to explore. So 
I started to explore the idea of a spiritual career. And I got this idea in my mind that I need to do Reiki or I need to get Reiki. And <laughs> I went to uh, this Reiki practitioner thinking that I was going to receive Reiki, not even knowing what it was. And then I ended up learning how to do it instead. And after that, I started to take classes on Reiki, tarot, crystal healing. I was an apprentice for a spiritual teacher that was local. I took a lot of different spiritual classes and I thought I'm already gifted. I'm just refining my skills. So I did that and then I started my spiritual business and I started off doing readings. They were intuitive readings. And then after a little while, I picked up tarot and oracle cards and that went on for seven years. For seven years, I had this business and it grew over time. I started to just channel. I started to channel as well as read intuitively and through cards. I thought that I was doing the right thing. I thought I was helping people. I thought, wow, I found some kind of purpose for my life. This must be what God wants for me. And my business became very, very successful. I mainly did readings about love. People asked me about life purpose, career, and love mainly. And I taught, falsely taught about Twin Flames. And then I changed the name from Twin Flames to Divine Counterparts because I thought it resonated more. I was already sensing something was off, but I, I thought, well, maybe I just need to change the name. God is asking me to call it something different, more resonant, more aligned, more in tune with my expansion and my spiritual growth. So I did readings for people for seven years. And very early on, I started to get tired. I started to get really, really tired, really, really unhappy. And I thought there was something wrong with me. Like, how can I be unhappy? How can something still be missing if here I am with this incredibly successful business where not only is it bringing me financial success, the financial success I was always seeking um, because I thought that it meant security. You know, I was, I was taught that I don't need to get married, really. I was taught that I don't really need a husband or relationship. I just need to be financially okay so that I could do whatever, whatever I want in my life. And so... Looking back, I, I know that that's how Satan got in and deceived me. And that's partly what opened the door, is that I thought that a spiritual business was the answer. I thought that that would bring me security. Financial, I thought financial security would bring me peace, would bring me inner an inner sense of security. Um, because like I said, I had been jumping from school to school, trying all kinds of different jobs, um, I had a lot of different jobs and none of them really panned out. None of them were really successful. I didn't really find success in makeup artistry or as an esthetician or as a psychologist. And so I thought this is, this is the answer. Um, and it did bring me success. My client, my client, um, my clientele, <laughs> it, it grew over time. It, it just grew so big. It, it got so large. I, I created a fan base on Instagram and on Facebook and on YouTube. My biggest one was Instagram. And my business was just so huge and I had so much work. I had, I was very successful financially, but yet I was not happy in my life. Um, and I was doing everything that the New Age teaches us, which is to focus on self-love, to focus on self-healing, to meditate, to connect to your angels, to your guides. Um, I connected to different uh, Egyptian beings. I connected to aliens a little bit, especially angels, which they're all the same. They're not really who they say they are. Um, so I just started to explore all of these different things as I was doing um, the readings as I was creating a spiritual business. I thought as I'm growing personally, spiritually, I'm healing personally and spiritually, I'm also helping other people. 
and I thought that was my purpose, but yet it was like a never ending hamster wheel. It never ends. You never feel healed. You never feel whole. You heal one thing, then there's more to heal. You think that you healed certain things and then there's always something more there's always another thing and you know if you start to feel unhappy it's because you're focusing on the wrong thing it's because there's something inside of you that still needs healing or there's karma that needs to be released or there's a new activation that you need or there's more reiki there, there's always more you always want more because nothing ever satisfies you and you know on the outside i mean i thought I, I i look like a successful person i am a successful person but yet i'm not happy but yet i don't have what i really desire which is to be married to have a family to have an inner sense of peace and fulfillment i don't really have that even though i'm doing all of this work on myself and in my business so this this went on for a very long time for seven years over time i thought i could just i could just do a little bit more i could i could change parts about my business instead of instead of reading cards i could just do intuitive channeled readings or i could connect to new guides i can you know channel new information that will bring in breakthroughs i just thought i could do more and more and more and at the same time i was very exhausted i was very exhausted and i didn't know why why am i so tired even talking about this i feel exhausted and i just went on like that <laughs> i went on like that for a very long time and i just I thought, well, this is, this is what God has given me. This is what he's given me. And so this is what I have to, to do. This is, this is my life. And so I have to make the best of it. And I tried that. I, I, I tried just finding joy and happiness in helping other people and just enjoying the success that this business was bringing me. And um, I thought this is it, you know, like, I don't know if I'll ever be really fulfilled, but maybe, maybe someday I will. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I just went on like that. And I also distracted myself with um, other things too. I, I noticed that I started to just buy a ton of crystals. I started to, you know, go out and travel and, you know, shop and just try to like enjoy life from a materialistic point of view because that's where I was successful, right? It was it was my business through through my business through financial success. That's where I was successful. I was I thought I'm just not successful um in love even though I'm reading a lot of people about love and maybe that's okay. <laughs> so that went on until <laughs> until in May of 2020. I remember I was standing in front of my house. I was standing in my front yard. I was planning to sit outside in the sun and connect to some guys or just meditate and relax for the day. It was starting to feel like summer, even though it wasn't quite summer yet. It was May. And I stepped outside and I, I had my, my bare feet on the grass and I heard a voice. And the, I can't explain it. It's just, it's a voice I hadn't heard before. And it came, it was so loud, but yet gentle. And it was very clear. It said home. And I, I said, what's this voice <laughs> Call, calling me? And it said, come home. And at the time I thought, home. I was working very closely with the Egyptian goddess Isis at the time. And so I thought, oh, it's her. <laughs> it's Isis calling me because I'm I'm out here in the sun. And, you know, she. I, I thought of her as like a sun goddess. I, did, I was doing a lot of sun worship at the time. And so I thought it was Isis. And I didn't think much of it. I just said, oh, I don't, I don't know what she's saying. And she's saying that I'm finally finding this, this inner 
home sanctuary place within. I, I really did not know. And that was it. Fast forward to, um, I have to get some tissue here. It's probably the, <laughs> the most teary vid video I've ever, I've ever made. <laughs> I, I did a lot of videos as well when I was in the new age. So I didn't think much of this voice. I kept doing what I was doing. I didn't know what this voice was trying to tell me. And I just kept my business going. And um, fast forward to December of 2020, I came across this video by this woman that I had been following. And I, I had followed her on Instagram because I thought that she was like a kind of new agey type of person like I was. And I hadn't really looked at her page in a while. And all of a sudden she had posted a testimony video. And I just, I was led to watch this video. So I watched it and it was her video of leaving the new age to come to Jesus Christ. And I thought, well, she's wrong. Like, <laughs> what do you mean you left the new age? You know, that, that doesn't make sense. Like, we don't leave the new age. We're spiritual beings. We can't leave our spiritual self. You know, that's what I was thinking at the time. And but I, something just, I mean, clearly God, you know, told me to watch this video. So I did. I've always been a very open person, even though I didn't agree with a lot of things. And I was always seeking the truth, you know, but I, I watched this video and I bawled. I remember it was it was nighttime. I watched it in the evening on my couch and I bawled. And I just I just knew like this she's <laughs> what she's saying about Jesus, it's true. I, I just knew it within, but I wasn't ready to accept it yet. I wasn't ready to really embrace the truth of, of Jesus yet, even though I, I knew who he was and I had never really disconnected from him since I, I knew about him from being Catholic as a child. Um, and I would see him around me a lot of the time while I was doing Reiki, while I was doing readings and activations and gr group collective events that I was doing. Um, I, I, I knew about him and I would see him around me, but I, I thought he was a guide. And so hearing someone else speak of him, like he's not just a guide, he is God. I, I, I didn't know what to think of it, but it, it stuck with me. And shortly after that, in December, January, 2020, 2021, my business started to grow even more. I remember I, I looked at my, my business. I looked at the clients I had. I looked at, you know, the money I was making. I just, I looked at my business and I thought, you know, this is good. Like I, I have a, a wonderful business that I thought God had blessed me with, but I wanted it to be more. I wanted it to be bigger when you're in the new age, you know, although you think that like, you think that you're one with everything and everyone, Satan's very deceptive. He pushes you to always want more and you start to think of yourself very highly. You start to get puffed up in, in what you're doing in your business. And so I thought like, yeah, my business is good, but I want it to be bigger. And so I remember asking my guide, like, please make this grow. And it did grow. And this I feel was used to further deceive me temporarily to distract me from what I had just come across with Jesus. So my business it blew up. It, it grew beyond what I could handle. At that point, I started to hire assistants because it was too much for me. There were too many people messaging me and emailing me and, you know, booking my sessions, and, which I thought was amazing, but it was at the same time overwhelming. So my business grew and that was where I got to its peak. And um, it, it was just... It was just insane. The amount of people that were getting readings from me, that were following, that were 
I, I was I had a pretty you know fairly decently big Instagram page and the people that were liking these posts about readings and channeled messages and just the wealth that was accumulating from this business. It, it was so insane. And, and it just kept growing. Um, <clears throat> it kept growing. And, you know, at the time, I, I, know, I know that God used this to, to save me. He always had a hand in my life. I just didn't see it until I looked back. That's how it always works, right? <laughs> so uh, shortly after that, you know, the, the relationship that I thought was a spiritual twin flame divine counterpart relationship, it, it fell apart. And I realized that that relationship wasn't what I thought it was. And at the time I was still deceived. And so I thought maybe... This person wasn't my twin flame, but maybe it was some sort of like karmic relationship or maybe it was um, a false twin flame and the real one's coming later. You know, I, I didn't really know. I just I just knew that it wasn't what I thought. And that relationship ending really transform my perspective it it opened my mind up in a way that I had never thought it would open <laughs> and I started to really look at things differently and I started to notice like hmm you know in the new age occult it's not what we always think I started to notice that there was deception like the twin flame I started to feel like you know what I don't even really believe in this twin flame idea anymore um and I started to just notice God started pointing me to deceptions, I think, to slowly start pulling me away from the new age, to, to open up to the idea that maybe this is false, maybe this is wrong, and I'm do, I've been doing it wrong. So I started to explore different ideas, I started to watch different videos, I started to just explore. And I started to notice that there were a lot of false, what I thought at the time were false things in the new age. So I, I realized that the new age wasn't what I thought it was, although I was still deceived thinking some of it was true. And that just went on. It's like little by little, God started to pull bits and pieces away until the summer of 2021. <laughs> um, in the summer of 2021, I started talking to this woman, one of my friends. <laughs> I won't name her because I don't know if she wants to be named, but I started speaking with her about Jesus. And she had told me that she didn't want to do tarot anymore. She was a, a tarot reader as well because she just, it, she just didn't want to do it. She was connecting to Jesus. She was start. she had started to read the Bible and um, I started to just find different people that were also reading the Bible. People were talking about how they left the new age. And I, I started to watch different testimonies. And I realized that the Jesus I was seeing around me, it was he wasn't a guide. But I was still so deceived. I was I was still so afraid. Like, well, if he's the way and all of what I'm doing is wrong, what am I going to do then? And so I was terrified to leave the new age, but I still didn't quite understand that it was wrong. I started to just question everything. And I questioned every single thing. Like I questioned, is this right? Is, is, is tarot right? Are readings right? Should I even be doing this? Is there something else God wants me to do? Is Jesus the way? It, should I leave the new age? Should I just create something different in the new age? I was, I was questioning everything. And um, it just got to the point where I went back to that first testimony that I had seen back in December. And I said, I think what this woman was saying in her testimony is, is true. But I, I wasn't quite ready to accept it because... I just, I didn't know if it was really true. How, how did I know she was right? How did I know that Jesus is the way? How did I know, who, how do I know who Jesus really is? 
And so I started to ask him. I started to, I, I know that Jesus was with me. And so I started to ask him, I, I knew that Jesus was with me. So I, so I started to ask him if he is the truth, if, if he's the real Jesus. You know, I remembered Doreen Virtue and her um, leaving the new age for Jesus back when she did, when she did that, I think I was two years into my business or so around there. And I didn't understand what she did. I didn't understand why she did that. But I, I had no hate towards her. I still loved her. I loved what I learned from her because I, I did take her, her in-person course. And so I, I thought about her and I said, hmm, what? I just started to question everything. And I started to ask more and more questions. And I started to get pulled back and forth, new age, Jesus, new age, Jesus. <laughs> like, how do I know that this Jesus is the real Jesus? How do I know which is the real Jesus? How do I know who he is? And so I started to ask Jesus to show me the truth. And then asking turned into begging. And then begging turned into crying, bawling at him. I remember taking hikes. I, I love taking hikes every morning. And I remember hiking just sobbing, like, how do I know who you are? How do I know it's really you? How do I know who is the real Jesus? I started to ask these questions <laughs> and um, not even knowing that I was in deception quite yet. And so I tried to, to, to talk to, to this woman that I had, that I had um, met, the one from the testimony that I had first watched. And I asked her, I said, you know, how do I know who is the real Jesus? And she sent me a prayer declaring Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And she told me that Jesus was at the door of my heart waiting for me to let him in. To, he was waiting like a perfect gentleman, she said, for me to let him in. And I didn't know what that meant. And it just frustrated me even more. And, you know, I didn't do the prayer. And then I, I was so desperate. I said, you know what? Maybe she's right. Maybe I need to do that. She, ta she told me about the armor of God. So I found a video on the armor of God. I listened to it one night, just trying it out. And I had the worst demonic dreams that night. And I thought, wow, I just prayed to Jesus. I, I said this prayer about the armor of God and I got attacked in my dreams. And so that must be wrong. How, how could I get attacked by demons when I'm declaring Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? And so I thought I was deceived. I thought she was deceived. I was so confused. I was pulled back and forth and I just kind of ignored it. And I went back to it and then ignored it and went back to it. And um, eventually, you know, I said, I just don't know. I don't, maybe he'll reveal it to me. Maybe he will reveal to me with time who he is. And, um, I noticed over time that summer, my, my business was starting to, to slow down. It was starting to decrease. And I thought it was because God wanted me to stop doing readings and start doing other things in my business, like group courses and classes. I did a couple of those. I did a few, I think. I, I did, I think a few day ones and then a longer one. And, um, so I started to get worried, like, well, what, why is my business slowing down? And at the same time, I'm questioning everything. And um, then I remember one week, I just fell back into the new age. And I said, you know what, I don't think that this is that bad. I think that if we want to do tarot, if we want to do channeled readings, whatever we want to do, I think it's all good. I, I, I got very deceived again. I was kind of like, on the edge, one foot in, one foot out. And then I got pulled all the way back in. I remember I did a live video on Instagram where I pulled out all my decks and I started just doing readings like I had been doing for the, the last seven years. And I thought, wow, this is great. I can still do this. My business isn't dying. <laughs> I could still, you know, channel. I still have my gift. I can still help people in this way. This is amazing. And, and um, I remember that night I was cleaning my room and I was cleaning my crystal altar. I had tons of crystals and um, 
God just put this in my mind, like watch this video. And it was, I don't think she'll mind that I mentioned her. So my friend Cassie, um, Cassie Redeemed on Instagram. I had been friends with her when I was in the new age and we, we kind of fell away and then something, she had gotten saved. So something just led me to watch this. I think God was just telling me, just watch this video that she did with her and another friend. And they were talking about her and this friend, they were talking about Jesus and they were talking about all kinds of things in this video. It was two part, a two part long thing. So I watched both of them and I said, I don't know why I'm watching this. You know, like my business is good. I guess I'm just interested. I guess I'm just curious, like what she thinks now that she's saved. And, you know, I used to be friends with her. So let me just see what she's up to. Right. And that was the night that I got saved. After after that, I watched those videos. I put my phone away. I I remember I sat, I don't even remember exactly how I got to the couch, but I remember sitting again on the couch where I had watched that original first testimony that spoke to me. And I just said, you know, I'm tired. <clears throat> I'm, I'm really tired and I, I just want the truth. I just want the truth of what is the truth. And I could feel Jesus there. And I realized that all of these times that I had been asking for the truth, I had been asking for him to tell me who he is and how do I know he's real? How do I know who the real Jesus is? He had been there just patiently waiting, patiently waiting like a gentleman, waiting for me to let him in, saying nothing, saying absolutely nothing, just there. And I just, I broke, I, I broke that day, that night. <laughs> that evening and um, I, I said to him, okay, mind you, I was bawling my eyes out and just panicking and just, I just fell, I, I, I felt like I fell on my knees and I said, okay, I let you in and I close my eyes. This all happened in seconds, but I'm kind of drawing it out because I'm, I'm trying to explain the moment that Jesus saved me. So I close my eyes and I said, I, I let you in. I don't know how, I, I think I just, I surrendered to him is the word. I just surrendered and I said, I'm letting you in. I, I surrender. I give up. I'm so frustrated that I just, I surrender. And in an instant, as I had my eyes closed, it's like he lifted this veil. And it was like, I could finally see, even though my eyes were closed, I could finally see. And it's, it's, he, he quickly like, took me through all the things that I had been doing for the last seven years through my life. He just, it, it was like watching a movie just like in sped up motion in an instant. And I suddenly saw that the new age was wrong. I saw that everything I had been doing was a deception. It was a deception of Satan. And I had been deceived because I was blind, because I was dead without Christ. It's just, I, it, it's the most supernatural experience that I have ever had beyond anything that I ever did in the new age. And I used to, I, I have stories, endless stories of the new age, but this, this surpassed all of it. In an instant, he peeled the scales off of my eyes. He lifted the veil. He gifted me his discernment. The Holy Spirit in that in moment came in and filled me and I now know that I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and um I felt 
the most indescribable peace after that. In the new age, we're always looking for peace. We're looking for balance and harmony. And we're looking to be in the present moment. And you never find it. But in an instant, when the Holy Spirit filled me, I, I had that peace. And it, it, he just changed my life. He, he changed everything. I now know that he makes us a new creation. We were once, I was once in darkness, but now I was in light. Now I was light. In Ephesians, it says that. And I, I, I now saw that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he had answered my question. He had answered my prayers, begging him to show me the truth with him. <laughs> he is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. And all my life, I, I, w I was seeking something better. I, I was like, what I'm doing, there's more. There's something I'm missing. I had always been seeking the truth, even if the truth meant that I had to give up my ideas, my opinions, my beliefs, even if I had to give everything, my entire life away for the truth, I was willing to do that. And I think I had gotten so desperate and just so desperate for the truth that um, it led me to, to Jesus. And I realized that I had been lost. <laughs> I had been lost, but my sheep know my voice and they follow me, Jesus says. That voice that I heard in May of 2020, that was Jesus. That was him, but I, I, I didn't know him yet. I, I didn't know him yet. And so I didn't know it was his voice, but I... I recognized it. I said, this is a voice that I haven't heard that surpasses everything else, all the other voices that were speaking to me. <laughs> and I followed him. I was very fearful. And um, Satan had been pulling me to, to not get saved. But of course, God wins. Jesus wins every time. He's already won. And so my entire life was changed that night. It's, he gave me a new heart. He gave me a new life. And the next day I, I went to sleep and the, the next day I said, I can never touch a card, a tarot card, an oracle card. I have to get rid of everything. Every, all of this new age junk, I had to throw it away. And so I did that. It took me a few days. <laughs> but I did it. I, I put all of the cards and the some of the books that I didn't have many books, but I had books. So I put it all in two trash bags. And I announced it that way. I posted it on my Instagram and I said, after seven years, I'm finally free. We have freedom in Jesus Christ. The freedom that I was seeking, the peace, the love, the life. I was just, I just knew I was missing God. I, I just, <laughs> I was missing God. I was, I didn't know what I was missing, but it was, it was him the entire time. And so that was the moment that the, the day and the moment that finally just changed everything. He, he saved me that night and it was no longer a question of, you know, which is right, or, you know, do I go this way or that way? I no longer felt this, you know, tug, this tug of war. I just knew that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He had been calling me for over a year at that point, 
and looking back I see I see him I see different instances where he had been calling me but I just didn't listen <laughs> and so it was really his voice that that got my attention so that's that's my story <laughs> that is my story of how I got saved out of the new age <clears throat> so I had known of Jesus since I was a child but I didn't really know him I was I didn't know I wasn't aware <laughs> that we had to have a relationship a personal relationship with him until he started to to call me until he called me and I recognized his voice and I followed him. So if you're being called to Jesus, if you feel like there's something missing, there is. <laughs> if you're not in Christ, you're dead. We're dead. We're dead. We can't do anything without Jesus Christ. The good news is that he, he will find us. He will, he's, he saved us. He's already, what he did for us on the cross, it's already saved us. And now he is, he's finding his sheep. He's finding all of his lost sheep uh, in the new age. And He's saving them. He's gifting them. He's blessing them with a new life in him. So in, in the new age, there's this idea of who Jesus is. We think because we think everything is good. We think everyone has their own truth in the new age. Uh, and so we sort of create this picture of what we think Jesus is, of what he is to us in our own personal meditations, right? But we don't really stop and ask him, well, who is he? Who, who are you? Who are you and how do we know you? I want to know you. We don't ask him that. We, we put our own idea of who we think he is on him. And that's not who he is. God tells us who he is in the Bible. He tells us who he is. And... He's not an idea. He's not a mystic. He's not a hippie. He's not all about peace and love. Yes, he's and loving. He's eternally, infinitely loving. His loving. He his love is immense. But he is also just. He is also true. He is also perfect. And he does judge us while he loves us. So we have this false idea of who he is in the new age. And I, I know I had a false idea about him because the only other Jesus I knew at the time in the new age was the religious Catholic Jesus. And I had no relationship with him. I didn't know who he was. I didn't fully understand what he did on the cross. So I fell into this idealized version of Jesus. And then the real Jesus Christ showed me who he was. He told me who he was. He found me while I was lost. Every day I am just blown away. <laughs> I'm blown away by what he, he did for me, how he saved me, how he showed up for me how he fought for my soul, how he loved me even while I was deceived and working for the enemy, unknowingly, blind, blindly. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm just, I'm just blown away every day. I, I thank him and I tell him I love him and I worship him and I, I spend time with him and I read the Bible and I'm finally at peace. The part of me that was a seeker is gone. I mean, I'm a whole new creation now, 
but it's, it's just amazing to see that I was once lost and seeking and now Jesus has found me and given me a new life that I never expected in him that is greater than anything else that is it's just beyond words and I only hope that other people also get to experience the goodness of him and I pray that he continues to save those that are still deceived in the world but especially in the new age because I, I know how unhappy I was in the new age and how how miserable people really are thinking that they're they're just ascending <laughs> when really they're just believing and following lies of the enemy and so I pray that those in the new age are saved that that Jesus pulls the scales off of their eyes and shows them the truth and brings them to the true light that is Jesus Christ